Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of the Extra Miles Show. My name is Floris Geerman and today I'm speaking with fellow Dutchman Jeroen Pieter van der Vliet. Or in English we can just say Jeroen Pieter. He has been going through a very fascinating journey. Many years ago he was working as McDonald's as a floor manager. And over there he gained quite a bit of weight. Actually, he was overweight to about 110 kilos, which is 242 pounds. Over the years, he was able to improve his health and pick up more sports in a variety of different ways. And he was able to lose weight and improve his overall fitness. He was able to run eight marathons so far, four of which have been sub three hour marathons. And he just ran the Berlin Marathon in two hours and 51 minutes. He made slow progressions over time. And so we're going to talk through some of this because his first run was very short and very slow. Yet over time, he showed what worked and what didn't work for him. And he shares that today. There are no sponsors for this podcast, but I do want to mention our Marathon PR training program. This is an online course with about eight hours of new videos and many different training schedules as well, both for base building and for the actual 18 week training cycle for a marathon as well. And this goes into many different areas, not just the running, the low heart rate training with some high heart rate optional workouts as well, but it also covers the other elements from nutrition to ways to lower your stress levels to mindsets to different strategies, heart rate based for specific races as well. And it has been fascinating to see. We've only launched this program about three and a half months ago now. And just hearing some of the success stories across the board has been amazing. I I hear these stories from people who are actually saying like, I found a true love for running again because of the program. Or I was just in New York and I saw one of our members over there. He ran a 32 minute PR. He improved from a four hours and 50 minutes all the way down to a four hour and 18 minutes in just a three and a half month time span. And he is far from improving, far done from improving at this point. So it's been fascinating to see all of these different things happening in the program right now. If you would like to find out more, you can check out extramilest.com slash marathon. And I'll make sure to leave a link in the show notes as well. Moving on to the interview, I hope you enjoy my conversation with Jeroen Peter. And we are live. Welcome to the yes. Extra Mile Show, Jeroen Peter. Thank you. First of all, I will have to say, I love your pink headphones. <laughs> <laughs> yes, thank you. The, the iPhone headphones don't, doesn't work. That's, yeah. It's okay. No, so this is, a, this is a new episode, a new experiment. And uh, I got a new microphone, so we're testing that one out. And you got some beautiful pink headphones, so we're ready to roll. Yes. So, um, good. You, um, you've been running for several years, and I'm very excited to dive into your entire journey over here. Because you've come quite a long way, and I was very stoked to see that you just ran another personal best at the Berlin Marathon 251. Um you haven't always been running those kind of times and you have improved a lot over the years. So maybe we can just go all the way back in time to where it all started when you got into running. And, and also I know the weight loss was a big part of your journey as well. So maybe you can tell us a little bit more from the beginning. Yes. I, um, I played soccer in my uh, youth and um when i was 17 years old i think uh, i uh, stopped playing soccer and i just uh, go working and at a moment um now well i I was uh, working as a floor manager at uh, a big yellow uh, m known as uh, mcdonald's (laughs) Mm -hmm. so um i didn't work out i did eat uh, not healthy and so I uh, gained weight. At the moment, I thought this is the moment to start doing some exercise again. What What was your weight? What was your weight at that point? Um, at that point, it was one hundred and ten kilograms. You can convert it. Yes, to... so that's about two hundred forty-two pounds. Yes, a lot. Okay. 
<laughs> well, sure, um, sure, surely more than than what you have like become at this point. Like I, I see now that you've become a very strong like slim runner from that perspective. So yeah, very curious to hear how you how you did all of that. Yes, um, I started uh, playing soccer again. I was a goalkeeper, uh, so I didn't had much um, fitness level. I want to get fit for the new uh, season and I started running and uh, the first five ki kilometers were very hard <laughs> very slow and yes and I, I improved uh, running I did uh, longer distances but not on uh, math at that time so I improved running and uh, yeah, a couple of races I did, uh, I think in 2013, I did um, like uh, 20 to 30 races uh, in a year. So that's, a, that's quite, quite a lot. Um, you went from one extreme to the other extreme right there. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Um, the races I did were uh, 5Ks, 10Ks. And at the point, I did a health health marathon, and uh, yeah, so, so I uh, started running. Uh, and I think in 2015, I um, stopped playing soccer and uh, go to fully running four or five times a week. When was it that you ended up running your first marathon or sign up for your first marathon? What year was that? Uh, 2015, also. Okay, tell, uh, us, tell, in, tell us about that experience. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't know what to expect uh, from my marathon, uh, my first one. It was in Amsterdam. And I thought I was like uh, three hours and 30 minutes. That was my goal. I have to start something. <laughs> so uh, I had a couple of half marathons done. Um, but uh, yeah, that was my first marathon in Amsterdam. Um, I like uh, marathons in the fall because you can uh, train better for it in, in um, warm conditions and the temperature is getting lower when your race is, is done. So um, I trained, I think, uh, 20 weeks uh, to it, 60 to 20 weeks, I think. I was not really on uh, a strict schedule, but I was running four or five times a week. And um, yeah, I did. I did the longer runs also, like like uh, thirty k's and a thirty k race to prepare. Okay. Yes. And then, how did the actual race itself work out? Yeah, it's it's it was nice race and nice weather also, and I don't know really much about it anymore. Because I had uh, seven other marathons uh, <laughs> in my legs uh, this time, um, but I know the the start and the finish, um, and I can see my uh, uh, my race on uh, Garmin or Strava. Yeah, it it did go well. I had I had a belt on my uh, belly for training. for to, to drink and for my gels. Oh, like the, um, the fuel belt. Yeah, yeah. I didn't uh, know that you get that much uh, in in the race already with drink, and I, I didn't know how I, <laughs> I I had to do that. Um, but it was uh, a good for experience, and I liked it very much. And the race went well, um, and uh, the time was uh, three hours and seventeen minutes for first uh, for first one. Three hours seventeen. That's very impressive yeah. for a first marathon. Yeah, and and it probably had helped that you had done quite a few other races in shorter distances before that, including several half marathons as well. So at least you were to some extent familiar with race conditions. But then again, a lot of marathon first time marathoners get in trouble around the twenty mile point. So being able to finish in that time is very respectable. Absolutely. Yes. And and then from there on, how did the journey continue? Because you ended up running several more marathons and shaving off 
quite a bit of time after that like what ended up changing in the training or did you continue doing what you already did or i was continue doing what i already did i did another half marathons and 10ks and i think in 2016 i had 40 races even more than 2015 <laughs> wow <laughs> yeah. and i decided to run amsterdam again for the second time in 2016 it's the the year after my first one mm. because the, 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 the finish in the Olympic Stadium is, uh, is very nice yeah, yeah. definitely uh, that's a fun last lap to run over there um, yeah. coming through <laughs> yeah. having all the spectators and yeah that's in Fondel Park yeah. maybe you know it oh yeah no I've ran it myself in 2014 or 15 so that, oh. that was a that was a really fun race experience absolutely what what were some of the things that you have learned throughout some of these training cycles? Like, what were some of your key takeaways, and what do you think some of the other people listening can can learn from that as well? Well, I was still not training on meth then, um, but I think uh, uh, endurance running is uh, is key to uh, have a good performance. There are some schedules that you can uh, run, uh, for example. 14 kilometers in a week uh, per, per, per training, but I don't think uh, that will work enough. Maybe, maybe for starters, but uh, for for endurance athletes, um, you need uh, mileage, I think. So I I did a lot. Like then, I did the mileage. So what what was your training volume like? What what would you running? What what amount of kilometers or miles would you be running? Since 2017, um, I run uh, two marathons two marathons a year, so that's a, uh, that, that's my cycle. And um, I start with 50 kilometers a week, and I progress to uh, maximum uh, 150 uh, with my last marathon. Right on. That's some solid mileage right there. So you'll be running, what is that, like 8 to 10 hours a week towards your peak? Is that good? Yes, yes, I think so, yeah. Like you were just talking about some of the lower volume schedules working possibly for some beginner marathoners, but as you want to continue improving, that volume plays a role. It seemed, because even when I'm looking into your Strava, it really did seem the, the the volume increasing over time, right? Um, how about your actual paces or your heart rate and your intensity? Can you talk a little bit more about that? Yes, um, let's talk about math. Then, uh, in 2017, um, I was uh, running the, the training for the Valencia Marathon, mm-hmm. and um, that point, I was noticing, uh, searching online for um, sub three ma- sub three hour marathons uh, to improve, because I had uh, done Madrid in April of 2017, and that was my hardest marathon ever at the moment. <laughs> um, yes. Yeah, wh- why was that the hardest marathon? Was that because the temperatures in Spain get up really high, or was it other other reasons? Uh, the, the temperature was one. Uh, two um, was that uh, the elevation in the, in the marathon was quite high, and yeah, the temperature was I think uh, twenty eight degrees, so it was very hot to run. Mm-hmm. And I did not the mileage for a sub three marathon. Uh, I noticed later, um, so but I went. I started out for a sub three marathon, so <laughs> it was it was a breakdown. Uh, I I think from from twenty kilometers it was tough, but uh, with uh, uh, sometimes a walking break uh, I managed to uh, finish in three hours and thirty minutes. Right on. So then from there, it was back to the drawing board again. 
Yes. Let's see what's what's happened there, <laughs> and how to improve uh, my marathon times. Um, um, uh, with running, and I came across uh, extra milers um, uh, website mm -hmm. to run a sub hour, three hour marathon, and uh, that's where the journey starts. <laughs> oh, well, that's where the journey continued to some extent. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. Um, and in, in your article, um, is, uh, is mileage and methadone method is, is key. And so I improved, uh, my marathon times. Uh, my goal in Valencia was a uh, sub hour marathon. And, um, uh, I managed to, uh, run, uh, two, uh, two fifty seven. So. Right on. So, what was Good. your, what was your changes in training like? What heart rate were you training at before, and what was your new training cycle looking like? How much of the runs were you doing aerobically? How much of that was higher intensity? Did you do much of a base building? Tell us a little bit more about that big change that happened throughout that. Yeah, I um, calculated my uh, my heart rate. Uh, and I, at that time I was 30 years years old, and so one, 150 is my my heart rate. I still train on that uh, heart rate, and that's going fine. Um, before I was training uh, a little slower than I used to to train. Um, so when I started with math, I had to. Um, speed up my pace. That's a lot different than other uh, <laughs> people that running on math. That's but, a, yeah, uh, that, that yeah. is an interesting one. You're, you're one of the few people who actually <laughs> has yes. to speed up in order to hit their math phase, which yeah. is interesting. Yeah, I, th I think I, I ran um, 5.40 before. Per and kilometer. I, per kilometer and now i train uh or, or in 2017 i trained at uh, 510 i think okay kilometer. and yeah. do, do you feel you have to work hard for that or do they still feel like comfortable workouts for you um I, they are comfortable comfortable uh, workouts definitely yes um i can run the day after my long run, for example, um, and and I I can run uh, five times a week. Do you happen to know what your max heart rate would be? Uh, <laughs> I uh, I don't know exactly. No, Honestly. it's no, it's to to totally fine. But that that was one where sometimes there's some outliers too who have exceptionally lower um max heart rate or or some other people who might be able to have a 200 plus max heart rate and can sustain that for a longer period of time so sometimes there's obviously outliers so yeah i, th I think it's between uh, 185 and 190 okay my max heart rate um i was talking about the, uh, with a colleague uh, today and his max heart rate was above 200 to 10 mm. to 12 something like that Wow. So yeah, and he asked me um, if uh, math is the right way to train um, for him. So I I, I don't know exactly uh, if, if it's working for him or it will work for him. Yeah, and I think I think there's there's a few different ways to look at that part. I think that the 180 formula works well for the majority of people. However, there's, like I mentioned earlier, there's the outliers on, on both ends of the spectrum where if your max heart rate is going to be 200 or higher than that, as much as Dr. Phil Mefto mentions that there's not always a direct correlation between max heart rate and your aerobic um, zones, I do believe that if, if you're easily able to maintain 200 or you have a max heart rate of 205 or 200. 10 or whatever it might be that calculating the 180 minus h with some adjustments might actually give you a number that 
that might be lower than when you go to a medical lab and you test it that way. And this is also to some extent where Zach Bitter talked about this as well in our conversation, what he, he does look to some extent at max heart rate and adjust the formula from there. And, and this is why I think it's a formula. It's, it's good that that is one data point, but yet I still do from time to time, even with myself, look at some other data points as well, where after you've ran at, at math for a few different years, I've noticed that it becomes harder and harder for me to do all of my workouts at math as well. So many of mine are at math minus 10 or math minus 15. Yeah that's I, clearly I so it, you it, can, it, so you can go out the next day again and if you would be hammering fast miles every time at a max heart, max aerobic heart rate that might not always be the case yes i, I noticed it too uh, uh this year um that uh, some of my runs are lower heart rates than uh my math heart rate yeah that's it's uh beneficial i mm-hmm. think yeah. yeah so so how much higher intensity workouts did you end up doing throughout your different training cycles then um if, if you look at um my last training cycle and uh, that's the berlin uh, marathon it's countable on one hand i think to all my train <laughs> my, my my training uh, uh workouts yes. wow so, so ve- very small amount a very small amount um some tempo runs and I think in the later stadium of my training cycle, I added some uh, interval uh, sessions. Okay. Uh, that, interval se- that interval sessions are uh, thousands meters or 1600 meters um, on the track. Yep. Um, but not, not much, not much. Can you give some more specific examples of those workouts? So if let's say you would do the 1600 meters, so like basically you go to a track to do mile repeats, what kind of intensity would you do to that? Would you look at pace? Would you look at heart rate? How much time recovery do you do in between? Just curious to hear what that would look like for you. Yes. Um, when I uh, do the interval session, the long interval sessions, um, I um, try to do them on uh, a marathon pace to get used to the marathon pace you want to run. Yep. Um, and uh, I did rest, I think, 200 meters. So that's that's not much, but uh, uh, enough time to recover for me. Yep. Uh, be- before method method um i start i i did run uh several interval sessions uh not a week but more and more than what i do now in my last training cycles uh let's say from 2017 um there are not much uh interval sessions and then how many of those would you do if you would do like the mile repeats would you do four of them, three of them, six of them? Um, the mile repeats, I think I did four or five. Okay. Of them, yes. What, what about some of the tempo runs? Would you do any longer runs or fast finish runs or, or any of those? Um, the tempo runs uh, are shorter runs, but um, for example, math plus five or math plus ten um but not in long runs just uh a 10k or something like that yeah uh, I, I see something of your runs or others that uh, improved with long runs and at the end um some tempo uh, kilometers or mileage mm-hmm. uh, at the moment i think that's a little bit hard for me to do yeah. But maybe I, I, I just um, must try it. To it, do it. It is an interesting one. So I think the one you're referring to here is you run the first 75% of your workout at or below math and you keep it pretty mellow and at the last 25%. So let's say you go out for a two hour run, the first 90 minutes you run at at for me 143 heart rate or whatever it might be. If you go below it, like 135. And then the last 
30 minutes last 25 percent you would be running at marathon pace or marathon pace minus nine second per kilometer or minus 15 seconds per mile which it it teaches you how to hold back at the beginning of a race and to have that energy left in the tank for the later stages and those runs are not easy those can be very Mm -hmm. challenging especially if you go at marathon pace or faster than marathon pace after you've already been running for 90 minutes and you can obviously do these shorter as well you don't have to go for a two-hour run even if you do it for an hour run and you do 45 minutes and 15 but yeah i've i've personally found them to replicate race day pretty well without wrecking yourself of having to put a 20 mile heart on your body um and yeah. and sometimes those runs can still be hard i've previously bonked on them as well i have a i have a little video on youtube where i actually go out and i kind of underestimate how how tough some of those can be and this is why i think yeah. some of these training runs are good where you go out there and you you experiment with what is working and what is not but but then again even what you're describing of just going out there and running at a math plus five or plus ten and just becoming familiar of what it is like to run at a higher intensity is definitely good good preparation right there so definitely. yes what i also do is uh some races at marathon pace like a, a 30k uh, that's my preparation for the marathon. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, here are some uh, nice uh, 30k races. Um, it must fit in the schedule, in the training cycle, but um, all mo- um, mo- mostly of the time it, it will fit, or yep. I make it fit. <laughs> and so, so do you go into a race like that? Of oh, I'm gonna race it at marathon pace, or do you? Do you try to go slower or faster? Or what's your strategy for those? Uh, the strategy for those is um, that I go for a marathon pace. Uh, if we speak about a 30K uh, race, um, a health marathon race, um, it's a little bit faster. Yep. So, uh, yes. Yeah, so those are definitely like harder challenging training runs but they will get you in a really good shape and kind of a good checkup in the middle of your training cycle as well i'm sure and a confidence booster if it goes okay so yes um and i i have um for example um a 30k in amsterdam i run that slower than my actually marathon uh, but that's that's okay because uh, you know you have to taper well, and for for that thirty k you can't taper well because you're in your training cycle. Yeah, yeah, and I think you have your A races and your B races, and the Bs are, yes. are more to experiment with things and to test things. And yeah, I I totally know what you mean with that. And yeah, I think you can push yourself harder throughout your A races too. You can give it your all where. During a B race, if you give it your all, you might take much longer to recover again. So, yeah. yeah. What What else did you did you do? So you you ended up running the two fifty seven marathon, but still you were able to shave it down a few more times, and you had a few setbacks as well where you didn't always hit your goal. What were some of the different things that that you continued to do throughout that like not only running wise but even like nutrition wise or strength training wise or what were some of the other elements of your training um if, if you look the difference between uh, valencia uh, marathon and the berlin marathon um mileage was uh, was one key that i changed and um like nutrition um I eat the last two weeks of the marathon preparation uh, more fats than um, in my training schedule. Okay, in what sort of way fats and, and what kind of mileage difference was that? Um, the fats that I take is, are uh, almonds, uh, avocado, um, uh, eggs, uh, that's, that sort of things, and seeds. And the mileage, um, I think uh, Valencia Marathon was peak week uh, 100 uh, kilometers. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
and in um, the Berlin Marathon, I peaked at 150, I think. Okay, so you uh, did did increase training volume by almost 10 miles from one yes. cycle to the next there. Yes, and, and also a couple of weeks uh, at uh, 100k plus yeah. in the Berlin Marathon. So that makes a little bit difference to improve my uh, marathon time, I think. Yeah. Okay, good. And for the rest, that was still mostly at low heart rate training with some speed work sessions and some races leading into it then, right? Yes. Okay. Yes, that's correct. Well, curious to hear here, you you said like so the last two weeks you, you increase your fat intake. What is your reason for only doing that the last two weeks versus doing that throughout a whole training cycle? Um, the whole training cycle, I um, eat um, fats also, but less than the last two weeks. Okay. Um, I, I don't know exactly why I, I did this, uh, my uh, last and, and before preparation, my Köln marathon. I started with that. Mm-hmm. I think I have read it somewhere. Only I don't know where anymore. So yeah, I've tried it and um, it 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 was good and I think it uh, improved it, but I don't know for sure. Okay, well it uh, looks like you found something that's working. I, I, so, <laughs> yeah. I like I'm I'm just like you where I'm experimenting with a lot of different things and sometimes you you experience something and it works and sometimes it doesn't work but yeah it's it's one of those things where if you if you find like oh yeah I've I've been able to train well with it and typically it works well on race day as well even though sometimes some things in training work at a lower intensity and then I prefer to experiment with it at a higher intensity sometimes too because it might react differently again. So, but. yeah, maybe it was uh, the book um, from uh, Patrick Fitz- Fitzgerald, mm-hmm. uh, Racing Racing Weight. Okay, it's an interesting book. Yeah, to read. Yeah, you you've read it also. I've not read that one. I've read several of his other ones. That he has written several yeah. good books. So, yeah, the eighty twenty book. Uh, I recommend uh, also. Yep, that one that one is a good one. I like that book. I will say I've had a few people bring up to me how they use the eighty twenty approach and the twenty percent high intensity was still too much for them. And I, I can recognize that in some cases as well. Where I think it's very individual and also depends on where in your training cycle you are with getting that up to twenty percent. Um but yeah, there's a lot of good insights in that book. I like that one as well. Yeah yeah cool talk to me a little bit more about strength mobility flexibility do you do any of that or are you just running you know uh, i'm smiling uh, already (laughs) um actually i have uh, did not um do any uh, strength training mobility or something like that um so there is maybe an improvement for myself to do more uh, strength and mobility training what i did is on the track uh, at uh, at my club uh, we did some uh, technique uh, um, running skills skipping uh, like, like that but i do not train much at uh, the track Mm-hmm. Because because on, we train on math, that's that, that's why I don't train uh, a lot at, uh, at 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 the track. Uh, sometimes for a math test, it's uh, ideal for a math test and uh, track training. But um, overall, I don't train a lot. Yeah. Okay. Right on. Have you experienced any? Like, so after you go through a training cycle like this and sometimes during your higher training weeks, right? What what are some, like, so so you don't do necessarily mobility or, or, or flexibility or any of those. Are there any things that you do to recover well and to be able to run well the following week again? Is there, like, is there anything there? 
<laughs> no, like for, for for example, do you take hot Epsom salt baths? Do you take any cold showers or ice baths? Or do you do foam rolling or, or any of that? Or you're, you're more focused on the running component mostly? Uh, mostly on the running component. Um, uh, with longer runs, I do drink and eat after my long run uh, directly. Uh, like um, sometimes choco milk. Um, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes, sometimes I take a protein powder. Um, what I uh, take as a supplement is uh, magnesium uh, pills. Okay, and that, that, that's the only one I take. And that's. And do you take I that daily? Do you take that uh, daily? Daily. Yes, especially in my training cycle. And what what have you noticed anything in particular for that? Or um, I did notice something. Um, I think it has something to do with recovery, also um, some strength in the legs, and uh, that, that's it. I think. Okay, the chocolate milk is an interesting one because I think. A lot of the guys in the UK that I've had on the podcast have brought up milk or chocolate milk as well post workout. That seems to be a quite a common common thing. Yeah. So it, nice. it, it has some sugar, but uh, enough sugar for your post uh, uh, race or post uh, workout meal. Mm-hmm. And it tastes good. Yeah, <laughs> uh, sure, absolutely. <laughs> when you go through actual race day, right? So let's say you've trained at your specific heart rate of 150 or below. And then come race day, what is your strategy going out of the door? Because I, I get that question quite frequently. Like, oh, what, what heart rate or what pace should I be racing at? How do you go about that? Do you purely look at I have this time goal that I want to beat? Or do you do look at you let your heart rate go for a certain certain zone? Um, that's a good question in, indeed. Um, in my um, spring marathon in uh, this year in Zurich, um, I uh, managed to do also 257, but it's uh, another sub three hour marathon. Um, but I had my hair ha- strap on my body, but after two kilometers already, it slipped down to the bottom. So I had no idea what uh, what heart rate I was uh, running at. Um, so I decided to uh, run Berlin without a heart rate monitor. Okay. Um, the optical um, on, on my watch is uh, not um, good enough. Mm-hmm. Still, still not good enough. So um, actually, I do not race on heart rate a marathon. So I I do know what pace I can get. Uh, I wanted um, a PR of personal best uh, at Berlin. That was 253. So I want to go um, uh, faster than that. So I managed. And it was quite um, fast, I think. I I started in Berlin. And... uh, it uh, it went uh, very well, and I think from 34, 35 kilometers, it I, I had some troubles, but uh, it's it's like seconds. It it was minor, minor, slow, slow, but yeah, it's it went very well. Were were there any challenging spots that you had to push yourself through, like when you started going slower? There was or were you able to maintain all right? I, I saw I saw the course profile. I uh, watched that before the race, of course. Mm-hmm. And uh, between twenty six and thirteen kilometers is a little bit up, a little bit of elevation. Mm-hmm. Um, that was the hardest part, I think. But Berlin is a flat course, of course. <laughs> it's not like Madrid, Madrid or another uh, <laughs> marathon, but. Um, Yes, that, that was the hardest part to maintain there my pace. How do you go about 
challenging spots in your race is there anything you tell yourself or do you like how do you overcome challenging spots both both in actual races but even on on days that you don't feel like training yeah you you tell yourself uh, you you have trained for it and uh you can do it you can do this and you know um after the race you can rest <laughs> and you you have to go now and you know you know you can do it and yeah that, that's that's the main part and if you are um if you have troubles in the race you can adjust maybe your nutrition in the race itself and of course uh your um your wife wife or your girlfriend or something like that we think about that yeah and all those things will give you the energy to carry you to the finish line exactly <laughs> i, th- I yes. think that's a very valid point that that one right there of like discomfort is temporary and you're you're almost gonna get there like you you've worked so hard for this and now just now it's time to execute and and push yourself just that little bit harder and i think discomfort is one of those things that you can to some extent become familiar with and i think in some races the more you race i think over time you kind of know where your boundaries are too and it's this fine dance with how hard you can push it there but yeah it's it's not a territory you get into that frequently um but then being able to push yourself through it's yeah you, you you have you have to get the experience uh, with it also uh i've run uh eight marathons now yep. um and four of them were sub three hour marathons and mm-hmm. one slide above uh, 301 so uh, you know at the point this is what i need to have a sub three hour marathon and you know what points are going to be difficult experience is something to uh to to keep in mind yeah yeah absolutely what were you using for gear like what what shoes were you running in what what other gear what nutrition what was race day like for this last berlin marathon um I have not the Nike uh, shoes. <laughs> <laughs> no, I uh, the, the 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 last race I did run on the ultra um, race. Okay. So, so the zero drop uh, shoes. Yep. And quite a quite a light shoe as well. That one. Yeah, yeah, it's it's very nice shoe. Uh, normally, with all the shoes, I in a marathon race, I did get uh, black toenails. But mm. this shoe is uh, very light, and yeah, yeah, I did have no trouble with it at all. It was very, very good. Okay. I um, I was in doubt when I chose the shoes to go with a marathon with these shoes, but um, I did it and I trained with it also. So yeah, it it was very nice. That's good. Uh, be- before day shoes, I uh, did the Essex uh, shoes. There's there's so many different shoes out there. It's 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 yeah. fascinating to see um, how many different athletes are running in in those Nike shoes at the beginning. Like <laughs> I was just in the New York Marathon, but then even before that, a few weeks uh, ago, I was in Chicago as well for the marathon and. Yeah, that's a whole other deep to, deep topic to dive into. But yes, uh, we're not going to discuss it here. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a that's a long one. But yeah, uh, what about actual race day nutrition? What works well for you over there? Yes, I I, I trained with um, my gels that I always take uh, um, for last couple of years. Mm-hmm. And that are the Sys uh, Go gels yep. from Sys Science in Sports. Um, I did take one before the race, just five minutes before the race, and in the marathon itself, I did take five of them uh, every 
seven, eight, eight kilometers, I take one. Okay. And I only use water. Uh, I take water for the from the organization, yeah. from, from the event. And that uh, worked uh, well for me. And um, I had no problems with uh, at, for example, 36 kilometers or so whatsoever. Good. Do you take any salt tablets or do you take anything electrolyte or, or the cis is all that you need to get in what you want to get in? Uh, the cis is all what I need. Um, before the race, a couple of hours before the race, I do take a caffeine pills, yep. a couple. Um, that will get to, you. Uh, that that will get you going. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. They they hold on for a couple of hours, I think, and um, yeah, that, that that's something. That's another supplement I I take uh, before the race. Good. Do you normally drink caffeine, or do you drink coffee during the day normally? Um, normally, uh, maximum one or two cups uh, a day. Okay. Uh, and the rest of it is uh, tea or water. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So, so then taking uh, taking a few of the caffeines. I'm surprised you actually take it that far before your race, um, and not not throughout the race, because I assume the cyst doesn't have any caffeine in it, does it? Um, no, they have some special ones with caffeine, but I don't. I do not use it. Um, I've not trained with it. So I, <laughs> I do not take it on race day. Yeah, but yeah. It, 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 it is something that I could use uh, in other the newest uh, marathons. I, I do. It is something to experience with. Okay. That's why. Yeah. It, yeah. yeah I, I, on one of my previous lo- long training runs that I did a few weeks ago, I took all the gels without caffeine, and I noticed like about ten miles in. I was like, oh, yeah, I could use some caffeine right now. I felt like my my mind was kind of getting a little bit out of it, a little bit tired. I was like, yeah, I'm going to try next time to probably an hour in or so just start taking a gel with some caffeine just to keep the mind clear as well. Because I think especially in some of these races where you have a certain pace you want to be pushing for, I've noticed if at some point your mind is kind of wandering, all of a sudden I look at my watch and my pace has gone down quite a bit because I'm not kind of pushing it anymore and and so yeah kind of keeping the mind in whatever sort of way fresh there it's uh it's good to experiment with so yes indeed tell me a little bit more so i I do i do think one fascinating part just looking at your story is so eight nine years ago you when you were working at mcdonald's things things were not very active you got into playing soccer more you had lost a bunch of weight and you started running and ran a lot more how did how did your weight change over time was that gradually it just became less or did you see a pretty significant drop once some things turned around i think this is a topic that is quite interesting for some people actually listening here as well because i think the combination of nutrition and exercise obviously does have magical effects, but I would love to hear your your thoughts on this since you have gone through it all. Yes. Um, well, when I was starting with uh, workouts again, uh, playing soccer again, um, I did notice my nutrition. Uh, I was getting healthier food, but also there I didn't know exactly what to do. Um, you have to experience more and more with it. Um, my weight um, dropped a lot, um, but I gained also. Mm. So it, 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 it was just something like uh, uh, yeah, a, a yo-yo effect. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, at, at, at a certain point, I did manage how to uh, manage that. Um, I didn't gain a lot of weight uh, anymore. After a marathon, I gained I, I gain weight again um, because I enjoy life. And after, <laughs> after a marathon, you um, train less. So you see that your weight is gaining. Um, 
with my last marathon in Berlin, um, I noticed that my weight was gaining less. Um, I had a full recovery rate, um, and I um, at Sunday after my marathon, I um, um, get back to training again. So you had had a shorter break. It sounds like from from some of the previous. Cycles? Yes, I, the previous cycles I trained the, the week uh, after directly, and uh, that was hard to do. And um, the next weeks um, I had less uh, mileage because my legs weren't still recovered. Yeah. And in my training cycle now, um, one fully rest week. And I, I thought I can do 50k again in a week, <laughs> and and I can. <laughs> yeah. So th- that that's that's something I have noticed. Yeah. yeah, I do like those parts as well. When you finish a race and you actually you've trained hard, you've gone through the whole experience, and then actually taken a week off. And and whether you do some walking or some swimming or some biking, but actually just giving the body a break from from not just a running component, but even the mental break, I think it's a really healthy part of a training cycle. And it's yes. it's a good one to recharge again and get re energized for the next cycle again whenever that starts. But that's uh that's good. What's um so now you've done Berlin, what's what are some of your future goals from here? Like, what what do you want to accomplish? Because I know you're far from done, and you <laughs> you're very methodical about. All right, I got a spring marathon, I got a fall marathon. I'm sure you have plenty of different goals. What's uh What's next for you? Next is uh, Barcelona marathon in, in uh, March. Um, that would be a beautiful I- one. That's a beautiful city to run through. I, I hope so. I hope so. I, I have run there uh, a health marathon already a couple of years ago, and um, I was a little bit injured, but it was a nice one to run. Um, but my my spring marathons are not that good as my fall marathons. Okay. I have to say, um, you train in cold, and probably you must run in the heat. <laughs> And with a full marathon, you have um, you you train in the heat, and you have um, uh, you you race with some colder conditions, and that's that's that part uh, I like. I like to run uh, when it's uh, some hotter outside. Yeah. The the temperatures are dropping now, so we have uh, going uh, to do uh, long pants and long shirts. <laughs> again so um it's it's harder to get outside for me yeah how do you how do you mentally like throughout some so you live in holland it does get cold windy dark throughout some of these winter months then training for a spring marathon how do you mentally go about it do you have any tips or strategies that work well for you to consistently still put five five or six days of running in a week uh, yes, um, I don't like running in the dark. Mm-hmm. Except, and I um, run from my work to home when when it's light, or mm-hmm. I have a work break run like uh, this afternoon. I did a nine k uh, a nine k workout today. So oh, was, nice, uh, nice, nice, uh, and. And my work is in a nature environment, so it's it's very nice and beautiful to run there. Um, and I run in the weekends um, also. So I try to run when it's light and bright uh, outside. Sometimes it's not possible, but I, I try to, to manage uh, <laughs> a lighter uh, uh, when it's light outside. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Growing up myself in Holland, it was raining quite a bit during the winter months and occasional snow. Yeah. How do you go about those? Do you 
anything mentally there that works well for you? Uh, I think you have to go outside, um, despite rain or something else. Uh, you have to uh, prepare yourself for going out. When when I go out and it's not raining, it's okay. And if I work out when it's when it's going to start to rain, when I'm running again, when I run, um, I've no problems with that. Yeah. But if it's already raining and you have to go outside, that's <laughs> that's so harder <laughs> to do. But um, yes. It's you, you have to go outside and then it's no problem when you are going outside. Just get started. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes I remind myself too that it's all mental training at that point. And then on race day, you don't know what's going to happen. It could be raining the whole way. So it's, it's another good yeah. training element. You're getting out of the way for race day there too. So. In, uh, in, in Berlin, uh, I had some rain at the last uh, part. I was happily to do two, two hours and 51 minutes um, because uh, it's going, it, it went, it rained the, all the time after that. <laughs> yeah, that's that's rough if you're running for five, six hours on the course. You definitely uh, start scrolling oh. down quite a bit. Yeah. Right on. Do you what? What about any long term goals? Do you have any other races on the horizon past Barcelona? Uh, after Barcelona, I won't do uh, a full marathon again um, in two thousand and twenty next year. Um, I don't know exactly yet which one it will be, like Amsterdam again or Dublin or Valencia. I don't know. Mm-hmm. But I, I have a great goal. I think. Uh, the magical uh, border of uh, 245. I, uh, nice. That, uh, yeah. that's, a good, that's a good solid goal right there. Yeah. I have seen your uh, schedule on uh, the 245. Uh, 244, have you run in Boston, I think? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was a few years back. That was a, yeah. that was a fun one for sure. Yeah. So I, I'm going to try it. Um, for for Barcelona, uh, we're going moving out uh, soon, so there's uh, less time to train. I think uh, in the next couple of months. So Barcelona is just for fun. Maybe a three-hour marathon. But the the um, uh, focus is on uh, the full marathon. Good, good, good. And and 2021, we I I have the idea to. Uh, run all six majors <laughs> in one year <laughs> it's gonna be such an incredible experience i think yes yeah yes. that will be uh i mean all of them are such diverse races and just having been at a few of them back to back now again just seeing the energy um on the course and seeing the amount of people out there you're gonna have such an uh, incredible time and and Surely to run them all in one year too. That's that's gonna be a logistical mission, and you gotta work through <laughs> how to properly recover as well. Given that you've already run forty races in a year, that wouldn't be a problem for you. But if you're actually racing them, that yeah, it's a whole other <laughs> element again. So. Yeah, marathons are different than um, a fifth k or ten k. So yeah, yeah. so we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, yeah. good. Good, good. Well, in the audience, there are a lot of people listening, looking to improve their running in whatever way they can, like to become a stronger, healthier, happier runner. Do you have any other takeaways, any tips for people looking to improve? Um, Yes, um, be consistent uh, with your mileage. Uh, Have a good schedule. Uh, Plan it out um, with your... Uh, environment with your family so build your mileage to what you can do and um, plan, plan your runs I plan uh, my runs uh, uh, weekly or um, I, I have a big schedule for the whole marathon and uh, it, it can change it can change on the way to the marathon itself 
Um, you have appointments that's coming through or something like that. But uh, so I, I um, schedule my week to week uh, planning to see what room I have for running that week. So I, I, I schedule my runs. And and you adjust that frequently, or that is pretty set in stone for you. I adjust that frequently. I think uh, sometimes I feel my legs are tired. No, well, then you do some less kilometers, um, and you have uh, your your recovered well. You do some more kilometers. Yeah, it's I, I look in the week. Uh, if your mileage in the week is okay, it's it's gonna be okay, I think. And um, yeah, build up through your um, uh, peak weeks. Um, not too much, of course, but uh, <laughs> but building up yeah, nicely. Yeah, I think that that's another very good one. The I do see quite a few people building it up too rapidly, where they go from. Yeah three hours a week four hours a week eight hours a week and and mm. yeah it's indeed like putting on the brakes a little bit and gradually even though you feel like at the end of the week like oh, i could have done more it's all still the base building stages and gradually building that up over time is so important so yeah and um with nutrition you can eat healthy all day long um but you have to enjoy the, your life so in eating, you can have also an 80 20 rule, for example. Um, I eat, for example, uh, also chocolate in the evening. Uh, or are we going out for dinner? It's 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 possible with uh, with your schedule. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I think I think that's very well said. And yes, as much as there's like, yeah, you can be super strict about all of this and the end of the day it's also you end up going to a birthday party or you end up going through some of these things and mm-hmm. even sometimes when i'm surrounded by my kids yes i will eat a bit of cake but more out of a social setting and not necessarily like i would be plowing away a whole cake cake on my own if i'm sitting here solo but mm-hmm. yeah i think it's that fine balance between doing what works well and what yeah to what extent you want to do that absolutely so Good. Do you have any other closing words? Anything else that you want to share with the audience? Share uh, marathon things on extra milers to uh, communicate with each other uh, for tips or something like that. It's uh, good to good to know what others other people think about it. And yeah, yeah. There's there's a lot of conversations happening in there. So I didn't even yeah. mention this yet. Um, but yeah, <laughs> your rune is one of the admins in the Extra Miles Facebook group as well. And we've grown to, I think, 2,500 people at this point. A lot yeah. of conversations happening in there. It's sometimes even hard to keep up with it. Uh, but great, great questions and support and updates from runners all around the world. So... Yeah. For anyone who wants to check it out, it's the Extra Milest Facebook group, and you will find Jeroen in there. You will find Xaba and myself, and many other runners from around the world, trying to help each other out. So definitely, it's a good point right there. So awesome! Where can people find more about you, Jeroen? You have your Strava, correct? That you post Strava. I do the most on Strava. Um, I have Garmin, of course, um, uh, Facebook, that's, yes, Instagram, I put also. Cool, perfect. I'll make sure to link to all of that in the show notes as well. So, good stuff. Thank you very much, um, Jeroen, for sharing all of your insights. Um, You're welcome. I'm sure sure if there's any follow-up questions that people will know how to find you also through the Facebook group and other channels, but yeah and enjoy enjoyed hearing all this and it's been great seeing all of your progress over the over the years and i can't wait to see what's what's coming up next year and 2021 as well so all right good stuff your own thanks we'll talk soon again thanks a lot all right have a good one 
Thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed this conversation. More information about the Marathon PR program can be found at extramilest.com slash marathon. And this includes an actual breakdown of the course with all of the different videos and the different type of training schedules that you can expect as well. Also, all of the show notes from today's um, podcast can be found at extramilest.com slash 26. So that's the number 26. And there will be links in there also to the different Facebook groups, the different um, books and materials that uh, Jeroen mentioned in this podcast as well. So if you have any questions at all about the show, please let us know in the comments on YouTube or you can join the Facebook group and ask it directly to Jeroen or myself as well. All right, you guys have a good one. Later.